everyone. And today I want to talk to you about running a half marathon barefoot style. So I'll scroll down to my feet and you hopefully can see my my feet running there. I'm running barefoot style, running footwear. And um, I know it might seem strange because I do this vlog about running and I talk about how I run ultra marathons and marathons and all these things, but so what, what's the big deal about a half marathon? However, it is a distance to be completely respected. Um, when you begin, obviously, it's a, it's a massive achievement, but if you're an experienced runner, it's a long way. 13.1 miles, or 20, 22 kilometers, something like that. It's a, it's a long way. And uh, the reason I have to respect it more is because I've made the conversion across to barefoot running start back in November. Sorry, not November, December last year. And um, just to give you a, a very high level overview why it's such a challenge is whenever you wear any other footwear predominantly or um, running trainers you've got probably two to three centimeters of heel support in your um, in your trainers so basically your heel is elevated you know two to three centimeters off the off the ground and uh, so what that means is that your calf muscle isn't stretching as far as when you walk barefoot I wear a barefoot running style so basically it's like these vibrams that I wear, these five finger vibrams that I wear, they've basically got like tire tread on the bottom of my, my sole of my foot with no support elsewhere. So um, the reason it's such a challenge is since December to now I've torn both calf muscles twice. I've been out for between four to six months each, each, each tear, pure and simply because my calf muscle is not well versed to stretching that extra two to three centimetres every time you, um, you take a step. When you walk it's never a problem, so when you walk around the house it's such a slow pace, you, you, your calf can handle it, but very few people will run barefoot so their calf never gets that that kind of resilience or, or tension um, to doing so. So um, that's why it's such a challenge. Um, just to give you a, the polar opposite, everybody talks about, if you're an avid runner, the Nike 4%, which are the ones that give you an extra 4% um, improvement on your, on your marathon time. The reason that works is because basically you've got additional heel elevation so it's basically like you're being pushed forward every stride so your calf stretching even less so it's like the polar opposite to what i'm doing barefoot so when i run i've had to change my running style completely because you can't heel strike i used to be a little bit of a heel striker not massively but it conditions you to run on the balls and the toes of your feet and uh it might sound like oh yeah but it's equivalent of running like tiptoe so if you tried running barefoot style in tiptoe for, for a 10 20 seconds you will feel the calf burn so that will show you how hard your calves are working and they always say start with like a mile every week build up a mile so i'm, I'm you know i've done a half marathon once before in in barefoot start and it was horrendous you know my half marathon pb is 135 or something um i did a half marathon this year in barefoot and i did it in two hours five or something i can't remember the exact time but I did, I was wearing a ninja outfit as well. I'll talk to you about that in more details on another episode, but I'm, I was due to run London Marathon for a world record attempt as the fastest marathon runner as a ninja, and that was how my introduction to barefoot style came about, because I had to wear, you know, barefoot style split toe footwear to classify as, as ninja attire. So uh, <laughs> that's cut long story short. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll give you a, an update every few K here, just so you can see how I'm getting on. I'm, currently into I've done three or four kilometers already this morning it's not a lot feeling quite good I'm on a nice quiet guided bus ride so um, this isn't too bad but um, I have to go cross country a bit which which might help or it might hinder me because technically it's harder heavier on the legs to cross country but slightly more support on, the, on my foot on my feet rather than the pounding of the road constantly so I'll keep you updated how it's going just so you can see what it's like and it might inspire from some of you to to make the switch for those of you that are considering it regardless of all the setbacks i've had i do think it will make me a quicker and more efficient runner i'm lighter i feel a more connection with the ground it feels really nice it's a different running style but it's improving my running form dramatically so uh something to consider there's lots of pros and cons of running barefoot style and i'll i'll address them in a separate episode but i'll keep you posted uh, i am running with somebody else but he he uh, didn't want to be on my vlog, so he's, he's backed off a few hundred metres behind me, and uh, he'll catch me up in a minute. So, 
so I'll keep posting in a few kilometres time, let you know I'm getting on. It's horrible weather, it's um well it's not horrible weather, it's it's quite warm, but it's uh it's hammering it down and that's the one thing you don't want to have be when you're running barefoot across country is a uh, real muddy terrain, so we'll see how I get on there. But um I'll give you an update in a short while. Bye guys, it's uh part two of my uh running a half mouth in barefoot style. I'm uh, just over 10k in. My mate Rich is behind me, giving me lots of support along the way. He doesn't want to be seen on the vlog, so I don't know what to what to make of that. Maybe he's embarrassed of me, but there you go. Um, many will be, so he won't be the first, and he certainly won't be the last. So uh, give us a wave, Rich. <laughs> so uh, I'm uh, just over 10k in. Feet are alright, actually. A little bit of a hiccup. We're running this scenic scenic route across um, you know, um, next to a river, which is really nice. So I hopefully pan across. I'm um, just going through a gate now, just bear with me. Um, so it's a uh, are okay. Better than, uh, better than what I thought it'd be at 10K. So that's good. But we're now on the cross country part of the run. The last 10K have been uh, guided busway basically, so really nice running terrain. So the next half is uh, all off-road, so where well, most of the time people consider off-road harder for um, your legs because it's like, um, a bit like running at three kilometers times, isn't it? So it's extra work for your, your calorie burn to try and keep going, but when you're running barefoot, it gives you like a, the analogy I can use is like suspension on a bike wheel. So uh, yeah, it actually gives the calves a little bit of a breather, hopefully. So, um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted. I'm feeling okay at the moment. I'm running about I'm running at about a six minute mile pace. Sorry, not six minute. Yeah, um, no, six minute K pace. Sorry, not six minute mile pace. That'll be crazy quick. Um, which is about what I'm trying to do. About nine minute, nine minute mile pace is, is kind of where I'd want to run a marathon eventually, in barefoot style. So, running at six minute K at the moment is about is acceptable for a training space. So uh, yeah, it's wet. It's, uh, it's a nice day to run though. Really nice, cooler conditions. Uh, it's, it's stopped raining now, which is nice. And uh, I'll update you in a few case time when hopefully I'm on the home straight. So uh, I'll just pan across and you can see kind of river over there. It's pretty nice to run next to. And uh, yeah, see you shortly. Bye. Hi everyone, part three to half marathon, barefoot style, 5k to go. Uh, feeling okay? Calves are a little bit tight, but nothing uh, nothing too bad. And uh, I've, uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can see a heron over there, but right by the river, so it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, Rich is behind me, give us a wave, Rich. So, uh, Feeling a much a lot better than my previous half marathon attempt in barefoot. It's also important to note that I, I'm running this morning on a, a intermittent fast anyway, so I don't normally eat breakfast, but I just had a banana this morning as fuel, so pretty happy so far. So uh, home straight, I'll check in with you when I get to the finish. But overall, very happy. I've kept my heart rate low. I'm under my, uh, my math zone, which is maximum aerobic function. I'll talk to you about that in another episode on, on how you run to that. Basically, it's in the zone where my body's still using um, fat as an energy reserve. So, technically, I shouldn't hit the wall or run out of, out of energy. So, my heart rate at the moment is 139, which is just where I need to be. So, that's good. So, uh, yeah, all good. No injuries. Lovely scenic route, lovely morning. And I'll check in with you at the end. Hi right, everyone, this is part three or four, I can't remember where I'm up to really, but it's the uh, home straight anyway. I've done 20k now, so nearly there. It's been uh, yeah, really happy how it's gone. Uh, I'll put a link in this uh, this video to my uh, my uh, little video and the vlog at the end of the Cambridge half marathon when I was in a ninja suit. 
so you can see how ruined I looked at the end. And uh, the little joke that I always used to do, I used to do before and after videos when I run a marathon, and I always used to have a joke about, I don't know if those who are old enough to remember spitting image, I'm only just old enough, 38, so I just about remember spitting image. And uh, when John Major was Prime Minister, he was the only character, I mean if you haven't watched Spitting Image, it's about politics and and current affairs etc but a comedy sketch with puppets and the puppets were done in a really kind of unique way and the John Major was just you know he was he was shown to be so boring at the time that he was the only character that was pure grey and I always just joke that when I finished a marathon or a long run my lips went blue my face went blue my body was just empty I looked like John Major out of Spitting Image so I'm hoping I don't look like that now. I feel quite good. I've kept my heart rate low. I've been running at about a six minute K pace, which is uh, fine. Uh, like I say, I'm, I'm running barefoot style, so I have to go at a nice managed pace so my calves don't get overexerted. But I'm about, about half a K finishing now. And uh, it's been tough as well because it's been a cross country, half cross country, half half on road and uh, those of you that are relatively experienced runners know that the issues with running cross country and how it can take its toll on you where it's, uh, it's more sapping than uh, that you know can all sometimes finish like uh, you know an extra 20-30% effort than if you're running on road so uh, really really happy how it's gone because um, like I said at the end of Cambridge half I was absolutely broken so uh, I feel I've got more in my legs as well. So I think by the time I get home, maybe 23, 24k finish, which is which is great. So uh, this is the longest run I've ever done barefoot style. I've done a half before, but this will be over a half. So big milestone today. So very happy on Father's Day. And the other thing I'll just give a, a shout out to. I'll cover this in more detail another hour, on another episode. But I'm using an app called Footpath. And it's a really, really cool app for mapping out cross-country routes. Picks up all your footpaths and everything. But the, the main benefit of it is, on the Apple Watch app, obviously we talk about how it integrates with all your different tech. And uh, what it does is, it doesn't interfere with my other running app, which is Stride that I run in the background. And it just acts as a navigator rather than, than picking up. And it doesn't interfere with the GPS on my, so ultimately my, Apple Watch is, is doing two lots of GPS at the moment, two separate apps, but the accuracy seems really good. And uh, the best part about it is that it gives you voice turn by turn instructions on, uh, on a footpath. And those of you who do long footpath runs, it's very, very easy to get lost. So uh, we went off track a few times on this route, and the footpath app managed to pull me back to where I needed to be. So, massive, massive benefit. So uh, those who haven't used it, I recommend you have a, have a little look. No affiliation with it at all, but just giving you my recommendation. So uh, just looking at my mileage, 20.7k, so I'm pretty much there now. Feeling really good, so hope you found this useful. It's a bit of a different episode. We're supposed to be covering personal life, personal development, personal um, education on this. But this is like personal life for me, running and... Let me just see if I'm going right. Um, personal education for me, so uh, not, uh, this is my personal life story, running, so um, and testing myself. So I hope you found it useful. And it gets you a bit of inspiration to get out there and have a go yourself. Windy, it's been wet, it's uh, been muddy, but overall it's been a thoroughly enjoyable run. So take care, everyone. Have a lovely Father's Day, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.